Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a spline dovetail corner. Now, this is a flag case that I just recently did. Traditional dovetail on the top, but because of the angle, I had to do something a little bit different down there. I'm going to walk you through this. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. So if we take a closer look at this, it's got a 90 degree corner up here, and as I said, I can do a traditional dovetail. It's actually a through a, a mitered edge dovetail. But down here, instead of a 90, you've got a 45. So trying to do a traditional dovetail here is almost impossible. So what I did is I took my dovetail saw and has a thin kerf. It measures uh, 24 thousandths of an inch. So I drew out the dovetail and then made those cuts. And of course you got the same thing on the bottom. And then using um, a piece of gaboon ebony, which is jet black, sliced it on the table saw, but then you have to plane it because the fit is really critical in order for the glue to work. And I'll show you that in a minute. However, you can also use this on a 40, on a 90 degree. So here's a, here is a box I recently did, a little wood hinge box made out of English walnut. The accent wood is holly. So this piece on the lid and on the bottom, the hinge, and this accent is holly, which is just a nice white wood, comes out of Eastern United States. Uh, you got a 45 degree that is just glued, which isn't super strong, but this grain, the holly, is actually running across the grain, or across the joint, the grain's going like that. So that should give it a fair bit of strength. Okay. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I took this piece of ash, left over from this. It's, uh, I think it's three and three eighths of an inch wide. I've already glued the miter together. I'm gonna flush that up a little bit, then we're gonna go through, lay, the, lay out the joint, cut it, and then go ahead and make those splines, walk you through every bit of it. I'm gonna use this yellow tape. I'll draw right on that, and I'll saw down to the bottom of it. Makes it uh, easy to follow. I'm gonna do both sides just so that I can uh, get my depth correct on both sides. This, by the way, is uh, automotive, refin uh, what's it called? Right there, automotive refinished masking tape. It's... Okay, I'm just gonna lay this out like we would lay out a normal dovetail, and if you need help with that, we have uh, lots of videos. We'll leave one down below so you can get a tutorial on it. That'll be my, what we would call outside half pins. And now I'm gonna probably put three tails on this, and the reason why it's just because just because looks to be right for something this size. Open it up a little bit more. You can actually do whatever you want. Okay, so I got my spacing right, so this time I'm not gonna actually put a mark up. I'm not gonna make a mark with the dividers. I'll just put a mark with the pen, and then I'll come back this way. This just makes it very symmetrical, so everything is the same size. I'm gonna use a one and six rake. That's over one inch, down six. I happen to like that angle for dovetails. Now, I want this sitting in here, there. just so that when I'm on the bottom here, if I've got my saw held level, I should be on the bottom there. Now it's just a matter of lining up and following that line down to the bottom. You need a saw that cuts with a nice uh, smooth kerf. Can't be jagged at all. That'll show up when you go to put your veneer in there. Also want to make sure 
that the kerf is flat along the bottom so that it doesn't bottom out on the in there somewhere instead of dropping down to fill the kerf on both sides. What I meant to say was <clears throat> you want the bottom of the kerf to be straight, no bump in the middle. So when you put your spline in there, it doesn't bottom out on that bump and not come right to the bottom of the kerf on both sides. Now we can take that tape off. Okay, that looks good and clean. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Yeah, I just want to check and make sure that I did indeed leave those bottoms flat so that they don't rock. Well, that one does have a little bit of a rock on it, so I'm going to go in there and correct that. Okay, when I move it like this, it only touches on the outside edge, just exactly what I want. Okay, now we've got to dig out some ebony, and I'm, I'm using ebony because black is never going to change color, and it's going to be, give us most contrast, and that's exactly what we want on this. I never throw out any scraps of anything really, but especially stuff that costs as much as this does. So I want one side to be nice and smooth. Get rid of all the saw marks. Now I can tell by the reflection that's good and smooth. I'm going to go over the table saw. I've got to switch the blade out. I want to get a nice sharp rip blade in there. <clears throat> okay, now every, of course this is going to be different for every piece of scrap. So I need this to be square. So that's the side that I just planed. So I'm going to lay that down and I'm just going to take a really light pass to square this side up. Now, I can set that like this. This has already been planed. I now know that's square to there. I need to have this side made parallel to that side that I planed. Now I can go ahead and slice off what I need. And I always want that piece, because how thin it is, I want that to be on this side of the blade. That's pretty close. So now I'm going to cut really slow. You, you have to have a good table saw, you want a good blade. If there's any amount of run out in the blade, it's probably going to destroy this little piece of wood. You don't have to have calipers, you can do this just by uh, trial and error, but I'm just going to check that to see somewhere where we are. That actually comes in at 
23 thou that's should be my actual kerf but that's 30 you're always going to get a little bit of run out with your table saw so if we check this from end to end 28 31 30 29 and 25 actually so how are we going to plane this well i'm going to take a piece of sandpaper with a sticky back on it hey this is a 220 grit actually it's 320. i'm just going to stick that Clamp this in place. Yeah, I want to play in the right direction. I think this is the right one. And that'll actually hold that. First thing we want to do is get rid of all of the uh, saw marks. Careful not to hit the sandpaper with your plane, so that's just a matter of keeping it flat on that piece of wood. All right, I'll check that. Okay, so it's thin on this end. Which way was I going? I think this end is thin. No, this way. No. Check that again. Find out which end I'm trying to avoid. Okay. So this one is thin out here. Now what I'm doing is just lifting the plane ever so lightly right at the end so that I don't end up making this any thinner. 26, 28, 28, 26. So a little bit fat in the middle. Don't want any little scrap underneath there. It'll throw this off. So I'll take a pass right here. I'm gonna start go from about here to here. Now we'll take a complete full length pass. Before I go any further, I'm going to put this in the vise and try it. <clears throat> That's tight. That's just right. That's still too thick. So we're, we're okay down here, but we're still a little bit too thick up here. Now at this stage, I, I don't want to take more than one without checking. And I'm checking side to side just to make sure that I'm not removing material unevenly. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll put that out there like that, and that will uh, prevent me from planing that end. Okay, this is just about right. Yep. Okay. Now this is wider than it need to be, but I didn't bother to I didn't bother to bother to rip it. But I actually think I will now just to make it a little bit easier to get those pieces in. 
Actually, we can get two. We can get two out of that one. Hey. So nine sixteenths. This stuff uh, doesn't cut well with a knife. Oftentimes, it's fall of the grain. So I have an old Japanese saw that cut has a radius on the bottom. And I'm just going to use that to rip through. that to be snug. I also want to have a square bottom on the spline so what I'll do is set this up with my small shooting board that I use with my block point. And I'll get my bench hook out. Just carefully cut that piece. Now this side is down. Square that bottom up. Set that in place, make sure it sticks out far enough on both ends. That, that's the exact uh, fit I'm looking for. As I mentioned, we're going to use cyanacrylate. And it wicks, but in order for it to wick, both pieces have to be touching each other, I would say, snugly. Before I put those last two, just because I can't get at them this way, I need to trim these, but I don't want to trim them before I have them glued. So that's what I'm using. <clears throat> it's called cyanacrylate. It's super glue for wood. You typically, you find it in three different consistencies, thin, medium, and thick. The thin is the one that works by capillary action. And it uh, usually comes out a little faster than I want. But just a little bit, a little dab will do you if you're old enough to remember that. Now, just give that a second. Flip it around the other side. Now I like to use the accelerator. It just speeds up the drying. Now you gotta be really careful when you're trimming these off so not to break it. So I'm going to use my little flush trim. Don't push it too hard. Cuts on the pull stroke, so cutting this way, you've got the kerf supporting the piece. You just get near the top, it's real easy for that to break off, so you got to go easy, that's what I mean. Fortunately, it broke off above the joint, not below. Before I do those last two, I want to make sure that I didn't get any glue in there. So I'll just put my saw curve back in. Looks like I did. Now, you can sand this if you want, or you can plane it. I would prefer to plane in from the corner, just so make sure you don't end up pulling off any little bit of that spline. Blade set quite fine.
So there you go. And then the right application looks great. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.